everybody. I hope that you're all having a wonderful Friday night. Um, I um, have been needing to do this for a while, but I wanted to be able to do it live. And um, I did this once before live. And I definitely need to do it because I'm doing a baby shower tomorrow. And I just, I really don't want all of this. <laughs> to be at the baby shower. So I was like, I have to do it tonight. So I have to. Um, hey ladies that are hopping on, it's just a little bit harder if I'm gonna do on video because I'm gonna explain the products and I'm usually like trying to make sure you can see it. And so it just takes me a lot longer to do it on video versus just doing it myself. Um, feel free to ask me any questions as I go along and I will be uploading this to YouTube. And I'll post it in the group so that you, uh, anybody that did not catch this live, or I guess you can come back and watch it anytime on live anyway, but um, it will be uploaded to YouTube. So, let me put some stuff um, on to hold my hair back. Because I have some crazy, crazy flyaways. So, we just want to make sure that they're pulled back. Okay. So, basically... Most of us with PCOS struggle with facial hair. Like, can I get a high five or like a hands up if you do? Because not all women do, but most of us do. And I've struggled with facial hair since I hit puberty. And um, that's basically when my PCOS set in and with a vengeance. And so I am, I've, I've done several things in the past. I have plucked. I still pluck occasionally. I have shaved before. Um, I try not to do that. But um, the majority of the things that are the most thing that I do is waxing. Um, I guess I just find that it helps with the thing coming, uh, helps with the hair coming back a little bit thinner, and I'm not having to deal with it as often. Um, so, anyway, I'm going to give you a little close up of what I've got going on here, and then I'll show you some of the products that I've got. So, uh, I don't know if the video will show it very well. But most of mine is here. I've got lightly here, here, and then it goes down a little bit. I've got just a little bit here. I usually just pluck that um, where it's not crazy. I mean, it's not too crazy, so I usually pluck that. But I haven't plucked in a while, so I may actually try to wax that, which is a little out of my comfort zone because it's very sensitive, but we'll see how I feel. And then over here... You can see, um, you can see a lot better in person. A lot of it has come back more blonde. As I've lost weight, a lot of my symptoms with PCOS have gotten a lot better. One is with the facial hair. It's not as thick and dark and coarse. Um, I, hey, sorry. Hey, Lucy, no. Sorry, my cat is scratching at the carpet. So, I will say that I was on spironolactone which is like an anti-androgen, which will help with the male pattern baldness and the facial hair uh, several years ago. Excuse me. How do you watch a live video? You're doing it right now, Christine. <laughs> um, and then once I'm done with it, it will be posted to the group so people can watch the, the replay of it. Um, so I was on Spironolactone about five or six years ago for a couple of years. And I believe I took it like once or twice a day, like 100 milligrams. I was at 25 at first, then 50, then 100. And you are not supposed to be taking that if you're trying to conceive because where it does affect hormones, it can affect um, pregnancy, like your baby's um, genitalia and like stuff like that. So if you're trying to conceive, I don't recommend spironolactone. Um, it is a diuretic, so I think it makes you like go to the bathroom and stuff. Um, so with the spironolactone, I didn't have any really any side effects from it. Um, I do believe people take it also for like blood pressure, maybe. I've never struggled with my blood pressure. Um, so that's something I do recommend. There are some natural things like spearmint tea and stuff that I've not really tried. I've just noticed like with my weight loss and just cleaning up my, my diet, which is not always the best, um, it has helped with some of the side effects. Do I still take metformin? Um, I do. Now, I don't take near as much as what I did before. I was on like, I, so here's my story with metformin. I was on it for years. That was basically the first thing that I was put on when I was diagnosed back, 
when I was in college, like 2003, 2004, 2004, April 2004. So 12 years ago. That was like one of the first things they put me on with birth control and a few other things. And I've been on that pretty much the entire time. There was a period I was able to get off all my medication. I was also on some medication for diabetes, high cholesterol, the metformin for the PCOS, which I know is also for diabetes as well. But um, uh, I was able to get off of a lot of that about a year and a half ago when I first started the Shakeology and Beachbody programs. And I found that over time, as I did incorporate more carbs into my meal plan, that the weight wasn't, our bodies just aren't natural like most people. So I did go back on the metformin. And it's basically, because if I don't take metformin, I gain weight. I, even with a clean meal plan, it's very difficult for me to lose weight. Um, I can stay at a standstill. Everybody's going to be different. Everybody's body's going to react differently. It, it's just different for everybody. So I am on a lower dose of the extended release. I believe I'm on like a thousand. Whereas before I was on like 2000 or 2500. I don't remember. It was a crazy amount. And I have found that that um, kind of helps me at least stay at a standstill. I'm not gaining. So if, I'm, if I want to lose, I'm going to have to put in the work. And I think with most of you all, you all totally understand that if you want to lose, you got to be willing to put in the work. So that kind of is a little rant, but not a rant, but a sidetrack. So I do take metformin now still. Um, I'm not on any of the other medication though. Um, with metformin, I recommend that you take the extended release. Um, it will help a lot with the tummy issues and take it at night. Um, and that will hopefully alleviate some of the, the tummy issues with it. Now, uh, I also recommend starting at a lower dosage and working your way up. Do I take it before bed? Yes, I take it right before bed. I know some people take it at dinner time. Um, so really just sometime in the evening. I, it's on my bedside table. And that way I try, try not to forget it. So, uh, But it does help. Some people it helps them like drop 15, 20 pounds. It didn't me. Like it just basically, because I gained like 90 pounds in a year and a half when I went through puberty. And so, and I just gradually like eating disorders I wasn't eating and like all this other stuff and like I still like the weight was creeping on so the metformin basically kind of helps stop the weight gain but it never really helped me lose weight if, if that makes sense now some people help you lose weight some people help you ovulate get pregnant didn't help me with any of that so it's different with every person it really just depends on your hormones and your genetics and in your everyday life and your like what you're eating and what you're doing active we're all just made different so, anyway, so getting to the waxing, I wax probably, but yeah, feel free to ask me questions. I don't want you to feel like you can't ask me non-waxing um, related questions. I dropped 10 in seven weeks. That's awesome, Brandy. Like, that's phenomenal. I wish I could say, oh, I just took metformin and dropped 10 pounds in seven weeks. I had to work my tail off. Um, and I'm not saying that you didn't, but... Yeah, metformin doesn't have that effect on me, unfortunately. Um, so I wax probably every three to five weeks-ish, on average about a month. Um, it really depends on how much maintenance I do in between that that matters, like how much plucking or if I decide to be really lazy and shave one day, which I really try not to do. Um, I try to do more of the plucking than anything. And so if I can pluck, I can usually go maybe seven or eight weeks. Really, like, it depends on how much maintenance I do in between. Um, I like doing it because when I'm doing it by myself and not on video, I can honestly get in, be out 15 minutes, and I'm done. Like, no problem. Um, I just basically, there's a little bit of setup required. You have to have the equipment to do it. There's so many different ways that you can wax. I've done little, I've, I've done pretty much everything. This is the system that I use, and I've been using it for probably eight or nine years now or more. Yeah. And I had to do math in my head. And so it's it's been one that I've stuck to and I love because it works. So I use this little wax warmer called Gigi. Oh, it's made by the brand Gigi. Oh, sorry, it's hung on the door. And um, you can get this at your local Sally's Beauty Supply. You can probably get it off Amazon. Um, and it comes with a little lid that you can put on there. 
Now, with it, you just get this white part, which is the warmer, and this lid. And if you've been to like a salon to get wax, you might have seen like a, a super fancy version of this or one of these similar. So basically, you have three settings, a low, medium, or a high. And I, I use all three of them depending on what I'm, what I'm trying to achieve. So if I've got a full container of wax, it's going to take you a few hours for that wax to loosen up to get soft. So then I would probably want to put it on high for a while. Then I'm going to move it down to low about 10 to 15 minutes before I want to use it so it will cool down. Because you can still burn yourself if this is on high, guys. You don't want to put this on high and leave it there all day and then go straight into using your wax. Now, if you've got time and you know you've got a few hours and or an hour, depending on how much wax is in there, just put it on low and just leave it and it's going to be the perfect temperature. You're not going to burn yourself if you keep it on low. Um, for instance, um, let me see if I can, I'll move my camera. Like I have a lot of wax out of this. Like it's probably like a fifth full maybe, if that. So basically I, um, like 30 minutes ago, I turned it on high for a few minutes and then right before my video, I actually turned it off because I was like, oh, this is going to be too hot. So now it's on low so I can get it that temperature. And once you have it, Sorry, I hear the phone ringing. Once you have it and you play around with it for a while, you can kind of figure out what temperature works the best for you. And a lot of that you can also test with your, your finger, which is what I did a lot in the beginning. Um, I have burned myself with it, but that was because I didn't listen to what I'm saying right now. So stick to the low and you'll be good. If you need to uh, heat it up like a full thing of wax, because obviously the more wax that's in there, the longer it's going to take for it to cool down and melt down for you. So, basically the products you're going to need is the GG Wax Warmer. You can usually get that with um, some other side items, sometimes with GG or at Sally's. They'll have a, a thing where you can get this with a thing of wax. Let me grab some of my extras. I should have thought of that to show you what they look like. I did not think they threw. Okay. So a lot of times they'll give you like some little extras and freebies that go along with it to kind of make it a better deal. And that's what I would recommend. A lot of times they will give you like these application strips. You can also buy them separate. But sometimes you can get a package deal and it's a pretty good deal. And maybe for like 30 bucks or something. It's not that expensive. This is an investment. Like if, I mean, it's not something that you're going to use once a year and then be done with it. Like if, you, if you're like me, you're going to be using it monthly. Um, Mandy, I think everybody's been there, <laughs> but, um, earlier in the video, I shared some tips about metformin. So with this, you will need applicators because you need to, oh, my mom's message me. She tried to call me. I'll talk to her later. Um, to do, uh, so basically you need the wax warmer, you need the applicator strips and there's different sizes and this is a different brand, Suddenly Smooth. It, it all works the same to be honest. So you're going to need these. I honestly haven't really used the smaller ones before. Those are more for your eyebrows and stuff. And which you know my eyebrow game is not on fleek. It is pretty weak. Um, and so you'll need the applicator strips. You'll need wax. There are, oh my gosh, there's so many types of wax. Like you will be overwhelmed. So um, I use a soft wax. And um, I know that Nicole Mainwaring uh, she did a video before she does hard wax and I've got both and I will tell you a little bit about both um, This is all-purpose soft wax. This is good for basically and on there It will tell you like different parts of where it's good ideal for All over body blah 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 so you can read them and they'll tell you like where they're good for in here I have dark honey um, And honestly, I probably got the dark honey and like I think dark honey is good for coarse hair Um Yes! Hi, Nicole! I'm so glad you hopped on. I just talked about you. I don't know if you heard me say that. Um, yeah, I miss you. So anyway, uh, there's different soft wax. And really, they really depend on like your skin type, what you like. And honestly, I haven't had any breakouts from any of them. So just kind of go with whatever you want. Like I kind of buy with whatever because they have sales. And it's like buy one, get one free. So I'm like, oh, I'll get this one and that one to try. The all-purpose will work just fine. Um, so I use the soft wax. Oh my gosh, my mom keeps calling me. 
Let me send her a text message through my computer. Hold on just a second. I'm so sorry. Um, you can also, oh, hold on. Yeah. Did you answer it? Okay. I'm sorry. Give me just a second. I'll take it. I'm, I'm live right now, Mom. <laughs> Do you need something real fast? All right, I'll call you as soon as I get off, okay? It'll be a few minutes, though. All right, love you, bye. Sorry, my mom, like, yeah. She'll probably see this later and be like, oh, my gosh. Oh, so anyway, so that's when you get live. Oh, threading. I've not tried threading, but I've heard threading is painful. Um, but it, sometimes threading is like amazing. Like it can even last longer than waxing. So you also can do hard wax, which is basically what this is. And I know Nicole prefers the hard wax. This is good for like, it's supposed to be for sensitive and delicate areas. I bought this to wax like the bikini area because I had read a line that it was better to use. So I was like, I'll try this because it's different. Um, now, if you use the hard wax, you basically just need this, the applicator, and the GG warmer. Okay. Now, if you do the soft wax, you need this as well. And this is, I think it's, is it muslin? Muslin? I don't know what it's called. Basically, and you can get it already cut up in strips. I buy it like this in the roll because I can cut it whatever size I want and it. I feel like it's cheaper like this. <laughs> you you hate the soft wax. And that's the thing, like everybody. Um, sorry, I'm getting messages. Um sorry, uh, so I'm getting distracted. <laughs> um, so and really you have to kind of try it out and see what works best for you. I haven't tried the hard wax on my face. Um, I probably should try that next time, next video. Um, I have this one ready, so I'm gonna use this one already. Um now so the, it really just depends on your preferences <laughs> you look like a werewolf hey girl you and me both so but if you're using the soft wax you need some of these strips and this um is all in the same area is this better than the pre-wax oh so better than the strips with the wax already built on them a hundred times yes because i feel like you are it's kind of like I don't know how to describe it. Nicole, how would you describe like the pre-wax strips versus this? I feel like this is fresh. It's kind of like picking an apple off the tree versus getting one shipped from overseas here. Like it's gonna, like it's much better quality, if you will. Um, and I feel like the wax is gonna get a better hold on your hair. So you're not gonna have to be using as many strips. And I don't, I've never used, well, I think I used the pre-wax strips once. And I can't remember if I had to heat them up or what, but I don't think you do. But anyway, I just feel like this is just a much, I, I like this system. So I would say yes, even though I'm not an expert on those. Um, so anyway, so basically what I do is, oh, another thing you can get, which is not necessary, are these protective collars. When I first started, I did not have these, but I am messy. So, if you can tell, let me show you. Yeah, I agree, Nicole. Like, this is just, see, this is my collar. It is, um, let me see if I can show you. This is the collar, this white part around there, because um, I can lift up the wax. You can see it holding it up. That is the collar, and you can see how messy that is. So, if you're a messy person like me, you will want a collar and they're super cheap and you can use the same collar for the whole thing of wax like the whole container so it's not like sorry so it's not like you have to replace your um your thing every single time you wax you can if you want but it's gonna it's worth a small investment and that is actually the other brand i think Gigi has this too but i get whatever's the cheapest or what's on sale or whatever you know is the gimmick that month and I actually, I think I used this for the hard wax. I saved it because I'm cheap. Because um, I only used it like once or twice. So anyway, so that is another um, recommendation. 
And honestly, this whole setup, I would be surprised if it was more than $50 or $60. And that's with everything. And another thing that um, Nicole has that I don't have, she has like this um, numbing spray that she recommends um, for like special areas, like genital areas and stuff, um, which she has used before. Now, with your face, it may be more sensitive the first couple of times you do it. But honestly, you get used to it. It's just kind of like... What is something else that like is uncomfortable? You just get used to it. Like whether it's plucking, like it's not comfortable, but you get used to it. Um, I don't know, like insert whatever is uncomfortable for you that you, you just deal with it. So anyway, so what I do to prep my face is I usually wash it, but honestly, a lot of the times I just use these little oxy pads just to get off any excess oil just to kind of get a clean face um, from whatever's been going on the day. So I'm gonna do that real fast. And please feel free to ask questions and I'll try to answer as I go along. Um, I went ahead and cut up, let me move these strips. So like I said, I had the, this roll here and you can go ahead and buy them that are already pre-cut that are different sizes and I did that for the longest time. And it really doesn't matter. But then I was like, oh, I'll get this roll. And I feel like the roll, you can customize it and cut whatever size you want. And I feel like I'm saving money. Even if it's like a buck or two, I'm just cheap like that. So, I try to find the best deal. Right? Who's with me? Um, The hair, I, I would say just if, if there's enough for you to pluck, Without you digging in your skin, you should be able to um, to wax um, or a little bit longer. And I know that may be uncomfortable for some people, um, but I would say maybe an eighth of an inch is what I've heard. Kind of like not even the length of my pinky nail. I, I mean, it had to be way less than that. I'm trying to think. It doesn't have to be long at all because this wax will grip right onto it. And and this is complete transparency and kind of gross, whatever. But occasionally I get blackheads and I will even see that the wax has pulled out my blackhead, um, which is pretty awesome. And I know the blackheads aren't even like raised. They're like in my skin, right? They're in my pores. So if it's pouring, the, like if it's there on the surface, more often than not, it's going to be able to pull it. And you can always do it a second time. And if not, and I'll show you at the end, I will clean up with, um, I will pluck any of the leftover hairs that are just kind of stragglers and that happens and that's okay. So let me move some of this stuff out of the way. So I've cleaned my face. So now I need to prep it. And so basically I use baby powder. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's just Johnson's baby powder. And this will basically will, um, if there's any moisture in my face now from like washing it or using that, that stuff, it will absorb any of that moisture because the, moisture will oil and water doesn't mix and I guess the same with wax like you just don't you just don't mix it so and that will help it to grab a hold of the hairs do you get dark spots trying to pluck the small hair and you can't reach yes and that's because you're digging and you're like damaging like the your your skin so um you just try not to dig like, don't dig for it. Like, I know that's so hard, and I know that's not what you want to hear, but you just can't dig. Like, digging makes it worse. And I, like, trust me, my husband gets on me for digging all the time. He's like, you're, you're picking, you're picking. Like, you know, and he, he gets on me because he knows I will get upset with myself for basically damaging my face. Because, um, I mean, I've asked him to, to show me or to tell me. So, here we go. I'm going to try to do this where I'm not getting on the floor, but I'm still showing you. So, let me show you how I do this. So, basically, here's my wax. And I'm, I usually just kind of mix it around just a little bit. And then I'm going to pull this up, pull it out like this. And then sometimes if there's a straggler, like, or like hanging oil, let me, or wax, sorry, I keep calling it oil. Like this, let me see if I can do it like this. Like that, I'll just kind of twist it real fast and that makes any of it drop. It just kind of drops real fast. It just kind of goes nowhere. Oh, sorry. Let me do it again. So if there's just any stragglers and then basically you don't want a ton. That is going to be spread across, I mean, a little 
I guess, part of my face. So, that, that's basically how I'm going to be dipping. Pull. And if there's, I always do that just in case. And then I go put this on my face. So, I don't need a ton. I don't need to be digging and digging. And you're going to see, this is basically how much I put on my face and how I'm going to spread it out. So, Bleaching cream. I've never used bleaching cream, so I can't say anything for that. And I think over time, those black spots will fade. You just have to let them go. Um, I've I don't think I've ever really struggled with many uh, ingrown black hair or ingrown hairs underneath my chin or anything. But I think waxing does help with that. Okay, so basically, I'm using that method. What I showed you. Oh, let me. My wax. My warmer's moving. All right. So I'm doing what I said before. And so basically, I'm going to, I'm trying to see the mirror too. I'm going to rub this on my face, just into a thin layer. Sorry, I'm trying to use the mirror too, so. So just a thin layer. And before the video, I cut some of these strips, so. They look a little shorter than what I usually do. I was getting a little. So I'm going to line it up there. And I'm just going to rub it in really good. Um, metformin, I would say probably would kind of help slow down the hair, hair growth. Just because it will help with your insulin sensitivity. Which basically affects everything and all this, the side effects and symptoms of PCOS. So basically, I've rubbed it in really good. Now, you're supposed to rub down. I just I just rub every which way. Um, and so now you're supposed to pull against the growth of the hair. So I always kind of do a little deep breath. <laughs> All right. This is how, like, this makes me a real woman. Because I can withstand this, right? <laughs> ah! Okay. I'm going to show you. Just so you can see that it does come out. And I'm not going to lie. I get pleasure from seeing all of that hair on there. Because it shows me that it was worth it. I don't know if you can kind of see on your end. But, yeah. I can still feel a little bit left there. So, I'll probably do it a second time. So, anyway, so I've got this, and I'm, I've got a little bit of extra wax there, so I'm just going to go with, I, I folded it, and, or you can take a clean one, but like I said, I, I'm going to clean up all the extra wax that's just kind of straggling there, which is nice, because that'll just pick it up. All right, so now, since I've done this area, now you can go back and re-wax uh, but what I would do is I would wait a minute. I would go ahead and wax here, here, or wherever, and then go back and double wax. And that's okay. Um, I only do that like if I feel like there's quite a bit there, like more than what I'm wanting to pluck. Um, so I'm going to go next to where it was before. And, and honestly, within an hour, my face will be a little red, but within an hour to two hours, it will be completely fine. So if I wanted to go out for the day, if I wanted to wax in the morning, I would, I could, but I don't typically do. I usually only do it at night so that I can sleep on it and so that by the morning, I am good to go. Um, the first few times are kind of rough because you're just kind of like dancing around. Like, I'm serious. Um, like you're dancing around, you're kind of like, I don't want to do it, but really, it's like anything that's uncomfortable in the beginning and you usually do it, you know, over and over it You just get used to it All right Up here there isn't as much but I'll show you There's not as much on that one because I just don't have as much hair there. Oh, hold on. There's we're here on this side So I've got wax like sticking to me and but yeah, I mean, there's quite a bit of hair there, um, and it'll even pick up like your baby hairs and stuff. So you will have a smooth finish, and I mean, you can see it's slightly pink, but like I said, that will go away in no time. 
And I love, I, I've used those wax warmers where like you take the, the containers and you go take it to the microwave, you warm it up a little bit and, and then you mix it and, or stir it and then you warm it up a little bit and stir it, use it and then you have to go warm it up again. I use those for years. Um, this, I love it. I can take my time. I can just set it to low and I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about any um, issues like that, you know, of burning. Now I feel like, I, I usually use, I have a little mirror over here I use. I do feel a little bit more, but I feel like I can probably just pluck those. Let me go to I'm gonna go down here some because I usually have some stragglers down there. And if I miss any of your questions or comments, feel free to post them again because it's kind of hard sometimes. I do I might miss some of them. Yeah, in the beginning of the video, I explained all the products that I use and just some of the things that I suggested to use if you're going to do this system. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely needed to do this tonight. It was one of those like something's got to be done because it was long overdue and I'm going to this baby shower tomorrow that I'm throwing for my sister-in-law and I'm going to see a lot of people I don't see very often and I don't want to look like a werewolf so <laughs> which I you know I'm fine I've gone before and like gone to meetings and stuff with it and kind of crazy more than what I would like but I don't know I just it makes me feel prettier when I feel more manicured, you know, and I think that's with everybody. When my nails are done, I feel prettier. What does all that cost? Um, I would say each of the individual things put together is probably around fifty dollars if I had to estimate, uh, fifty to sixty. But they do run specials and stuff at Sally's Beauty Supply to where you can get like things on sale, and I always buy them on sale. I've never bought any of this full price. Um, yes, it will pick up dark and coarse hair that's short. Um, those are probably the dark and coarse hair sometimes are the easiest, I feel because like, they're like, it's, I guess, because they're easier to grasp a hold to, I guess. I, it's the easiest way to say. So, this side may be easier for y'all to see because I'm not having to turn. Get a little messy this time. All right. All right, so I'm just rubbing it in to make sure it's all over, and now I'm gonna pull. Okay, deep breath. And that the the sideburns area are what usually has the most hair. I mean, you can see that. Like, I know this may be gross to some. But I'm just showing you how, like, how long would it have taken us to pluck all of that? And what you're seeing, um, all of the hair that was actually, that you, was visible is actually stuck in the wax. So what you're seeing now is just basically all of the roots of the hair. Which is nice. Or like the, the, what, yeah, I guess that is the roots. I'm not going to try to say something fancy because I wouldn't, I mean, it'd just be BSing y'all. But, Yeah. I get satisfaction in that because, I mean, it's not like I'm going for a walk in the park, you know, right now. So, I'd use that to get the excess just to kind of clean it up. Yeah, and I feel like there's a few stragglers, but I need to go here and then here. So, let's do that. And this is actually probably thinner than what it looks. It's just that this is the dark honey, so it looks darker. It's not actually that thick. Rub, 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 rub. 
Okay. Huh. And like the, you know, this area is not as populated, but you get the gist. So, getting the excess. I feel like there's a little maybe strip there I missed. Sometimes I've got wool stragglers, but I can wax those, so, or I mean plug those. So I'm feeling, maybe you'll see this. <laughs> or is it just me? I'm gonna definitely do this little section right here. So what is your all's preferred method of hair removal? Do you all have a preference? Do you all enjoy the way that you remove your hair? Are you looking for something different? Okay. Ah. Yeah. It's gonna be smooth as a baby's bottom. All right. So, what I do now, oh, I, I've never really waxed this, but I'm going to today, tonight. I'm a little nervous just because there's a lot there. And there's not usually as much, but I have not really done any maintenance there at all. So we're gonna try it. I'm nervous. Heart's racing. <laughs> um, I can't believe I'm doing this for the first time. Love. Everybody say a prayer for me. That's your worst area. Thanks, Nicole, for the support right now. Do you mean like with hair or like pain? It's not a bad area for hair for me, but I have none to, not for pain. Okay, good. Oh, okay. That wasn't too bad. I definitely worked myself up for that though. <laughs> Let me get the excess. My worst are my sideburns. Okay. So you will sometimes get extra. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my little double chin. I've never done my double chin either. I usually just pluck that. Yeah, Rachel, I posted on like if you go back and look at the beginning of the video, I shared like the different products and their prices. And that sort of stuff. Um, I honestly, I don't know what laser removal, like what, I, make a post about laser removal, hair, hair removal in the group to see if there are other women with PCOS. Well, obviously they all do if they're in the group. Um, if they've had laser hair removal and what their experience was. Because I'm wondering if, because where our hormones are different, if that would really, um, what am I doing? I don't even know what I'm doing now. I'm talking. Um, if it's been beneficial, if it actually has been, like, you know, worked long term for other women. Because um, I know there are different types of those types of laser or... Wasn't there another kind that what you could do? I don't know what I'm talking about. But I had a friend that did it. And she was never diagnosed with PCOS, but there's a, I mean, good possibility she had it. Um, and her hair ended up coming back after a while. But. Okay. I feel like I'm about to die because, like, I have wax here, wax here. It's all, in, like, oh, my gosh. What am I doing? I just want to make it out of love. I don't know why I'm waxing, waxing all these new areas tonight. I guess I'm feeling adventurous, right? If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Okay, I still got a couple of scragglers, but, but yeah, I don't have to wax them up there. Or plug. Okay, so now the next thing I use is I usually use baby oil. 
if hair is dark however if your hormones get out of balance again it can cause hair to grow back yeah that's see, that's what i'm thinking like with pcos our hormones are all over the place so it's I almost feel like if you spend the money and the time for laser that you just you don't know really like if someone else's chances are like 90 percent of it not coming back ours may be like 50 because of hormones um i usually use baby oil but i don't know where my baby oil is so i'm using the oil tonight that i usually use after I get out of the shower, which is a weightless body oil. And really any oil will work because basically what this will do is it will remove any extra wax residue and it's good for your skin. So it's going to make your skin soft and it will actually, it's probably better than baby oil, will make it easier for those hairs to get plucked out. So... I'm just going to rub a, I probably could have put it on my hands and rubbed it. And you know what, you're not alone, um, Dana. There are a lot of times that I end up just shaving because I'm in a hurry. And, you know, and I hate doing that too. Um, and that's why I really try to find a time at night to wax, um, Yeah, I think waxing is really going to be a, a great benefit to many of you all. Um, and the thing is getting a system that that works and that can work for you. Um, and like I said, honestly, if I'm like doing this by myself and I'm not doing a video, I can be in and out in like 15, 20 minutes because I'm just like, whoosh, 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 because I'm not having to go reheat it or like doing things multiple times like because it, it it's just it's awesome so basically I'm done waxing now and what I'm gonna do is I will just go through and I'm not gonna do a video because I did it last time but I'm gonna go through I have this little awesome mirror over here I'll show you that I got from Bed Bath & Beyond years ago um, you'll see my messy sink um, and it opens up and it has like all of these different lights and stuff that you can turn on. I think it's unplugged because I plugged in my, um, I have a couple other things. I have my phone plugged up in the, the wax warmer. But anyway, so it turns on these lights and I can turn my magnifier on. So I will sit there and I will, so after, like this is set in my face and it will soften it. I'll get my tweezers, which is very important to get a good pair of tweezers. These tweezers I have for Sally. There's a Revlon one, a Revlon Professional that is amazing. Um. I prefer the, um, the slant tip tweezers. This is uh, from Sally's. I got these on sale and they're Stella brand. I've never seen anything else buy them there, uh, but they were on clearance and so I bought them all. Like, I mean, if you know me, like if you're like me, if you find something that fits, you're gonna buy it in like every color, right? Um, <clears throat> but anyways, I have these everywhere. I mean, if you're like me, I have, gosh, I have like five tweezers just right here in front of me. And then I have them in my purse and everywhere else. So, anyway, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit in front of my mirror for about probably five minutes at max and just get the little stragglers and I'm going to be done. And I'm going to be, you know, if I want to maybe in the next week or two kind of pick some stragglers I can to kind of offset the waxing. And if I do that like every four or five days, every once a week, I can put this off for another six weeks maybe. Um, and that's pretty awesome. Now, after the month mark, then I'm getting to the point where even if I'm trying to maintain once a week, I'm going to probably have to, you know, get to that point where I, I, I want to start waxing. But I think it's been about two months since my last waxing, which I needed it. So anyway, please post any other questions or comments you have below after this video. It will be posted to the group and I will upload it to YouTube. I hope that it was to benefit, uh, you know, to um, some somebody's benefit and that it um, really opened your eyes to other possibilities that you can for hair, you know, for facial hair care. Um, you know, you can't help where you grow it, but you can help where you keep it. And I know a lot of women are insecure about their facial hair, and I was at one point in time too, and now I'm just kinda like, eh, like, you know, hopefully I'll get to it when I can, because it makes me feel pretty to take care of myself. And I think that's in all facets of my life. If I take care of myself spiritually, emotionally, physically, like, whatever um i'm gonna feel much better about myself and i'm gonna carry myself in a much you know lighter like you know a higher manner so i want you to post below um 
yeah, what you do, I want to know, like, if you wax, if you do, how you wax. Um, and if you feel comfortable going in the group and going live and sharing your regimen, that would be awesome. Um, if not, you can make just make a post with a picture or with no picture. So I definitely think that each one, every single one of you can add value to this group. And so it's just up to you to be willing to share your gifts with everybody else. Am I right? Like, trust me, you can add value, but it's up to you whether or not you want to share those gifts. So thanks for hopping on. I'm going to finish up this lovely face so that I can feel beautiful tomorrow. And I will chat with y'all later. Thanks for hopping on. Bye.